Alex Thomas. What's Lose. going on? Chris Lowe. How How'd you, you get your name, Chris Lowe? I'm interviewing you, dude. Um, I'm just like, does it, does it stand for Chris Los Amigos or nah, man, it's my Chris name. Los Angeles? No, nah, it's really my name. It's Los, it's off, really like, your Los, last like, name? Los Angeles, you know what I'm saying? Like, Julio G actually kind of was like, Los. Just so your name is Los. Los Angeles? Yeah, Los. Oh, okay. That's real, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. That's the legal name. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, running for the feds or nothing. Nah, then you good, change yeah. it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got a different ID number and take okay. care of that stuff. Your name's not really Pepe Fernandez or nothing like that. Uh, Julio Valenzuela or some shit? Okay. okay. <laughs> what about Alex, man? Alex Thomas, Alex Thomas, or Alex man, Thomas? Man, you know, good? my real name is Alexander. Alexander? But as a kid, oh, I but thought I was that was tough. the dumbest shit ever. Alexander Thomas. I'm like, dude. <laughs> that is not gonna look good on the back of a jersey, you know. <laughs> when I eventually played for the Lakers, and then I had to come to my realization: I'm five six. I can barely touch the net. Ain't no way in the world I'm gonna play about pro basketball. So, so Alex, man, first I appreciate your time, man. You're the first comedian that I had to get on the right. series. Really? Down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cause you got a story, man. Straight up, you from Cali. Straight up. My dude, I've known you for years. I've seen your grind. I've seen, yeah. you know what I mean. But I don't yeah. even know. The extent of where it all started, right, right. you know what I mean? West Alex. Coast, born and raised, not too many cats, you know, it's one of those kind of things where people can't believe I'm from LA. Because in the entertainment business, especially, you know, uh, acting, comedy, everybody came from somewhere else. Right. Everybody, if you sit right, in a room right, right. full of guys, they all come to LA from other places to become, you know, rich and famous and become stars. Not a whole lot of guys came from the west side yeah. and making some noise and making it happen in this business as far as comedy goes and, and uh, you know what I mean, acting. So I'm from here. Where'd you go to school at? Stuff out here. Uh, I went to uh, Fairfax High School. Okay. You know what I mean? But uh, I was born and raised in the hood, you know, South Central LA. Parents went to Manual Arts. Okay. You know what I mean? A uh, ton of my family went to Critchaw, Dorsey, you know, right in the neighborhood. Um, but my parents, they sent me to like private school as a kid. Even though I was born and raised off of, you know, Adams and Exposition and over there in the 30s off of Normandy and, you know, and, and, and you know, Adams and areas like that, uh, they bust me to an all-white private school. So they didn't want me to get caught up in the Crip and Blood stuff, you right. know what I mean, like a lot of my family got caught up in. So you know, I got teased my whole life, you know, living in the hood, coming back to the hood and being around the white kids all day, you know. It, 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 it was a tough day, you know, kids in the neighborhood, you sound like a white boy. You act like a white boy. And I used to be like, holy cow, whatever gave you that idea? You know what I mean? Imagine coming on the South Central LA with a, a Def Leppard t-shirt, a, a hockey stick, and a Rubik's Cube. They looked to me like, this dude has completely sold out. Like, motherfucker, you got a hockey stick? <laughs> yeah, like, I was playing the white boy sports. You know what I mean? I was golf, hockey, I could swim. You know, you know what I mean? Stuff dudes in the hood just weren't doing, you know what I mean? But I thank my parents big time because that opened me up to more stuff. Right. You know, I, who knew I would end up being a comedian and one of those type of comics that can go around the world? You know, I always say, I'm telling jokes from Maine to Spain. You know, I'll be in a ghetto-ass comedy room in Detroit one night, and then the next night I'll be in a snowboarding convention in Montana. Right. Killing them. Right. And they get it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. That's because I saw both sides growing up. Is it how did you think? How did you think cracking jokes just to get through, and then taking it to like a stage? Of, of, you know what I'm yeah, saying? As yeah, a comedian, yeah. as an actor now. Right, right, right. Because it's hard to like. You could crack jokes in the hood and be the funny dude in the hood, but then you got to be able to crack jokes in front of a room full yeah, of. Yeah, man, and it's a completely different thing. Right. Everybody thinks they're funny. Everybody got a joke or two. You know, it's easy to be funny around your friends. Right. They know you. They wow. were there when that happened. You know what I mean? That's an inside joke. <laughs> hey, Lowe, when we was at the car wash and the old boy uh, slipped and fell, you'll laugh because you were there at the car wash. The trick is making that crowd in uh, Utah laugh at the car wash joke. Or, you know what I mean? It's, it, it, it becomes a science. And of course, man, I never knew, I never in a million years thought that it would end up being uh, uh, an occupation. Or right. I never realized that telling jokes and doing stand-up was going to end up to a career of TV and movies and seeing the world, you know what I mean? Right. It's almost like when you hear cats that's, that, that love hip-hop more towards the 80s and 90s, how they always say, man, we started out this for fun. Mm -hmm. We started out, this was a hustle, make a little cash here and there, but you never thought that the world was going to love you. You never thought that you'd be filling out 5,000-seat stadiums. You never thought 
that they would know your name because you're the funny guy or you're that hot rapper. So that's how it happened with me, man. I didn't, I didn't realize, it, you know, it was going to become my life. You know what I mean, man? To be honest with you, Los, I started out as a dancer, dude. What? I was a dancer, man. I was a hip-hop my whole life. You know, I was pop-locking and break-dancing. And to make a long story short, when I was 18 years old in high school, I started dancing on Soul Train. Just being a cat, you know, going up there, you know, trying to sneak on the stage and get on Soul Train. And, uh -huh. <laughs> and that's where I met Rosie Perez. And me and Rosie Perez became best friends. And uh, that was around the time where she, I was in college, and uh, she left Soul Train to get a job on a new show called In Living Color. She did the choreography for the Fly Girls, Jennifer Lopez and all that, right? And she needed us an assistant, because I knew all the hot dances, I knew all the, you know, right. the stuff the streets was doing. And I kind of like mixed that in with Rosie, and I became her assistant to the Fly Girls the first two years of In Living Color. All that stuff. So, that's where I met Damon Wayne and Kenan Ivy Wayne. And they were like, dude, you could dance, but you a fool. You need to be doing stand up comedy. I was always silly. And like I said, high school class clown, best right. human, but I, I, you know, I'm like, you know, for a living. <clears throat> and I was in college and I needed a job. So she was breaking me off doing choreography. They were like, you need to be on stage. It will open up doors to you and you can get paid. I was like, comedians get paid? They were like, look at us. And the rest was history. Three, four weeks later, I started doing stand-up. I was like 92, 93. And, uh, dude, the Wayans family are the ones that got me into stand-up. And stand-up opened up the, the world for me. And, you know, two years later, I know I got a crazy story. Two years later, still as an amateur, not really making no money, that's where I met Will Smith. And Will Smith came to Amateur Night at the Laugh Factory and saw me. And I guess I stood out, and he was like, dog. Came off stage, guy, he was like, dog. Hey, man, my name is, I'm like, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> my name. <laughs> Told him, you know, my name. He's like, dude, he goes, I love your stuff, man. Was two years in the stand-up, really wasn't making no money or nothing. You know, $50 here, $75 there. He was like, um, do you write? And I was like, man, I write my own stuff. He's like, man, I always wanted to do stand-up, man. And, and if, I, if I did comedy, it'd be the kind of style that you're doing. Hey man, I got this new show called The Fresh Prince. I was like, Doc, I know the name of your show. I watch it every Monday night, you know. Yeah. He's like, man, can you think you can come down and help us out on the show? I was like, like, what do you like, what do you mean? Like, he's like, you know, like writing, you know, like coming up with some funny stuff for me or you know, helping us with the writing. I was like, yeah. He's like, um, what do you think you can come down? I was like, uh, dude, I will meet you there right now. <laughs> I'll spend the night. Meet you there in the morning. Dude, and the next day, I was there at the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And that led to me being a writer on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air for three seasons. So that opened up my relationship. So people always hear when I talk about Will in my interviews, they always say, like, you always talk about Will Smith. You talk about Will Smith because he gave me my start. You know what I mean? He took yeah. me, he took me, I'll never forget, he took me from making, you know, $75 a gig, $50 a gig, to he paid me out of his pocket $500 a week. I got the checks to prove it and, 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 and set me off to the races. So people always ask me, how'd you become a writer on the Fresh Prince Bel Air? You know, how do you, you write on TV shows? And I'm like, dude, I, I couldn't even tell you. I don't even know the route. It was just a right place at yeah. the right time type story. And that led to everything, man. I got two, about 200 scripts from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You know what I mean? Yeah. From just, you know writing on the shows and learning. It was basically on-the-job training. He just threw me in the pit with the writer's staff, and I just learned. 